Maista myös aito Amerikan keisari. Keisari 66. Käsin tehty aromikas pintahiiva olut. American style. Hey, it's Alexi from Chilling of Bottom and you are watching KSTV. Hello everyone, we are here in Provinsirok in Seinäoki, Finland with Alexi from Children of Bottom. So first of hello and welcome to Chaos TV. Well, thank you very much indeed. So uh, on last weekend you just kicked off your festival season and you played a couple of festivals in Finland, Kivelahti Rock and Sauna Open Air. So what are like your thoughts about the festivals? Uh, well, given the fact that they were first shows since like eight months ago or something, you know, so, so I, you know, I thought they were pretty good, you know, for first shows, and you know, they were. Well, the first one was, you know, basically a hometown festival, which is always kind of weird. So it was, uh, it was definitely good, and uh, sound was better, you know, like you know, I could feel that it, you know, it was the second show that you know I didn't have the jitters, you know, of the first show, and uh, then we did a, a third one in France, uh, the Sonosphere, which was even better. So, you know, all in all, I thought it was pretty, yeah, pretty good. So now you have also had the chance to play the new songs live as well. So what has been the fans' reactions towards the new material? I think they're still listening, you know, like when we play the song, songs, you know, they're like kind of like out there, you know, they're listening and when there's like, you know, blast beats and shit like that, then you can actually see like mosh pits going around and, and stuff. But as you got to remember, like, you know, the, the album actually came out the day when uh, we, we did the first festival. So and people didn't really know the songs. Okay, I mean, there's been a couple of songs out there in the Internet, but but still. So uh, hopefully uh, tonight and well by tonight, you know, people have been actually listening to the record and, you know, like maybe get more into the song. But you know, we'll see. So, as you said, the CD has been out for only a week now. So, what kind of feedback have you received from the album so far, and have you been pleased with it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm not even just saying it. Like so far, the feedback has been amazing from the press and from the fans. You know, which is, of course, the most important thing. You know, but like, yeah, it's definitely been amazing. Just very uh, positive and and. Uh, Yeah, so I'm I'm pretty happy, you know, happy with this so far. So, do you usually follow what people writes about your music? Are you the kind of guy who reads reviews, or are you the kind of guy who tries tries to avoid reading them as much as possible? Well, I don't. I mean, I don't read. I don't. I don't go to the internet and read any of that crap. You know, I'm. Just, I'm not that guy. But like, you know, as <laughs> you say that, you know, most like the most important ones, like magazines, like actual magazines. You know, I would read. You know, the, the reviews and stuff. But, but, uh, yeah, I think that's about it. So, I mean, there's. I mean, nowadays there's like probably five magazines that I check out. You know, like you know maybe one in Finland and and a uh, couple in UK. You know, couple in America, and that's it. You know. So you you had to do for for Metal Hammer you had to pick up an ultimate supergroup and you ended up picking Tommy which is your friend uh, uh, who died and he was the ex drummer for Ayattara and then Dimebag Daryl Sebastian Ba and Nikki Six and of course you in the group as well so what kind of music would that group ended up playing in the end? Well, it would definitely be heavy as shit, but also very entertaining you know I, i don't know like it's it's actually now it makes me think i, I think it would be pretty extreme but <clears throat> of course you know we'd have like you know melodic singing in it too so I'm, i'm 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 saying pretty fucking awesome you know that's what it would be like so what is like your general opinion about the super so-called super groups ha- have you ever been invited into some like that kind of projects yeah there's been some talk around about something like that you know I'm, i can't mention any names but it, it, it like for me you know it just never happened because right now i'm really i'm just like 100 percent of my time goes for uh to jail the children bottom but super groups you know i'm not i don't really think yeah I, i don't really think anything of them you know i think that you know if the album if the album is good you know if the music rocks you know then you know nothing else matters but you know if it's just for the sake of having famous people you know doing making a record and the music sucks you know then what the fuck i mean then what's the point yeah. right so 
uh, I, because you are a pretty famous guitarist, I guess you uh, you get a lot of emails from different bands that could you do a guest appearance to their CD. So how many actually you got you got from different people usually? Well, it's like a daily thing that somebody asks you to do a guest appearance. Well, actually, not that many people have my email address because everybody knows that I really suck at answering them anyway, you know, or even like checking my emails. So, but yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of, uh, you know, requests for me to do something like that, you know, and my my general rule would be that, you know, I, I don't do shit like that for money, you know, I, I would e- either do that for a band, which I personally think is like super awesome, or if like a friend of mine asked me to do something, so that's why you know, I've done shit for like pain or like like Annihilator and stuff like that so and it's it's got nothing to do with money I never asked anything for him I just do it because I've you know I actually enjoy doing it but like I wouldn't just like play a solo for some random ass band that you know I wouldn't even like but just to do that for a couple hundred bucks and you know, that doesn't make any sense not for me anyway so you have said some kind words of the finished so-called thrash metal band Lost Society so did you check out their show at Sound Open Air No, I fucking missed it because, like, you know, they started like the second we finished the show, you know, and so we basically we were just like, yeah, when we got off the stage, that's when they started, and they were on a different stage. So uh, I heard them, you know, but I, you know, I couldn't actually check them out, unfortunately. But, but uh, yeah, I really want to see them live, though. I, I mean, I hear nothing but good things about them. I mean, I heard the album, which kicks ass, you know, I like their attitude, and I've heard that they kick ass live too. So. Does it bring like any memories to you, those young kids playing like from the times that you basically started a band? Well, it kind of does, yeah. I mean, I don't know why, but like I, I've just seen, I've seen pictures of those guys. You know, I've heard the album, and, and I can hear that same fucking attitude and that same rage we had like back in the day when our first album was coming out. You know, because we were like 17 and 18 years old when we started touring, and you know when the first album came out. So I can, I can definitely pick up that same vibe. And that's why I fucking hope that they will really uh, fucking start doing shit, like you know, start touring Europe and like you know, just like nonstop. Because I think that they, they really would have a chance. So at, at this point, I'm sorry about fuck school, fuck work. You know, just concentrating on your band. That's what you should do. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so uh, you you were a friend with Jeff from Slayer. So. And what were like your first thoughts when you heard that he had died? Well, I wasn't that surprised, you know, because I mean, he, he had been pretty messed up for a while. But <clears throat> of course, you know, I mean, it, it's always, it's always like more than a bummer, you know, like you know, kind of friend of yours dies, you know, it's, it's just, it doesn't sink in right away, so it takes takes a while. And uh, but I don't know. I mean, it's like I said, you know, it wasn't it wasn't exactly a surprise. And you know, I went to his memorial in in LA, and a lot of people and a lot of his friends, you know, and like fans and stuff like that. It was a, it was actually a beautiful ceremony. I mean, like all together, it was a, it was a great thing. And and I think that you know, just to see how many people loved him and how many people honored him in general, you know, that that really uh, kind of made it made it better. Even though it's still fucked up that he's dead, you know. But what are you gonna do? So, how big of an influence he was as a guitarist to you? Um, mostly as a songwriter, he was a yeah, he was definitely a big influence. And I think that, like, even if you are not like a Slayer fan, he's still influenced you somehow. You know, if you play in an extreme metal band, he's definitely been an influence on you because, like, he's the guy who I mean, he actually wrote those legendary riffs from like you know Angel of Death and shit like that. You know, and. Uh, I mean, not to put Kerry down, you know. I mean, I'm just saying that, you know, he wrote a lot of legendary stuff, and uh, so yeah, of course, you know, songwriters from uh, songwriters' point of view, he's been a big influence. Yeah. So, uh, Children of Bottom will turn 20 years next year. So, do you guys have some special plans to celebrate that? <laughs> not really, though, because like, <clears throat> I don't see that as a reason to fucking celebrate anything you know that's when we just started fucking around well that was actually like it, it was it was 20 years from now and it was like 93 but but uh well 94 actually the, the the first demo tape that's when it came out but the album came out like 16 years ago you know i think that's like more of a thing to be proud of you know but we'll see 
but I think it's great milestone for any band to last 20 years in in oh, yeah. the, like today's recording business basically oh yeah absolutely I mean like th there's not that many bands you know who would actually last for that long time and actually even make eight studio albums I mean for for a metal band like us you know it's kind of rare nowadays yeah you know. okay so thank you very much for the interview and good luck for tonight's show uh, anything you want to say as a closer to your fans you can hold the mic yeah, just thank you for everybody for uh, supporting Chillin' and Boating and checking out our, uh, especially new record, but not only that, just all of them. Thank you so much. We fucking love you guys and uh, see you on the road.